There are many myths that surround the blood red moon of the lunar eclipse. The Inca believed that a jaguar attacked and ate the moon. The big cat's assault explained the rusty or blood red color that the moon often turned during a total lunar eclipse. The Inca feared that after it attacked the moon, the jaguar would crash to earth to eat people. To prevent that, they would try to drive the predator away by shaking spears at the moon and making a lot of noise, including beating their dogs to make them howl and bark, but I won't draw that part. In Mesopotamian culture, the people viewed a lunar eclipse as an assault on their king. We know from written records that the Mesopotamians had a reasonable ability to predict lunar eclipses. So in anticipation of an eclipse, they would get a fake king intended to bear the brunt of any attack. The real king would act like a normal citizen. The fake king would then die and the other king became king again. The Hoopa believed the moon had 20 wives and a lot of pets. Most of those pets were mountain lions and snakes, and when the moon didn't bring them enough food to eat, they attacked and made him bleed. The eclipse would end when the moon's wives would come in to protect him. They would collect his blood and restore him to overall health. All better. To the Louisiana tribe of Southern California, an eclipse signaled that the moon was ill. It was the tribe member's job to sing to bring him back to health. The Batamaliba tribe in Togo and Benin in Africa believe that the sun and the moon are fighting during an eclipse. I bet the sun would win. The people encourage them to stop. They see it as a time of coming together and resolving old feuds and anger. It's a myth that's held to this day. In Christianity, in Acts 2.20, it says the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord.